Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing five mysterious disappearances, all that occurred within basically a two year period and all occurred within the same area in British Columbia, Canada. It's come to be known as the Kamloops Triangle. And I'm gonna have various maps to show you, but I'm gonna go through each case in order basically discussing the circumstances of the disappearances uh, most of these people have not been found and most of them went missing under very mysterious circumstances and i've gone through all the different research and the interviews and it's just so sad listening to how these families are suffering and i just hope that by circulating their stories maybe some more leads can be generated the first story that we're going to be talking about is a gentleman by the name of Luke Nivelle. He was 48 years old at the time of his disappearance. He was known to be just a fun-loving guy. Everybody loved him. He was known to always go the extra mile for his friends and family. He was a professional firefighter and he loved helping others. He dedicated his life to helping others. He loved dogs, he loved horses, he had a German Shepherd that he said was always with him, always by his side. Luke was last seen around 4.30 p.m. on October 9th of 2017 in the area of Spence's Bridges that afternoon driving his 2003 Ford E250 van. The next day, the day after he went missing, the van that he was driving was located. It was burnt out and it was along the Sackham Forest Service Road in the Spences Bridges area. Now, unfortunately, they obviously the RCMP came in, they did an investigation, but it was a little bit tough and the family really had to fight tooth and nail and they finally got them to come out with a cadaver team. The dogs came out, they searched the Spences Bridges area. Unfortunately, they found nothing. However, the RCMP Southeast District Major Crimes Unit, which is in charge of Luke's case, they did classify the disappearance as suspicious or in their words, Janelle Silhouette speaking on the behalf of the crime unit that was in charge is in charge of this case she said that they have enough information and evidence to say that there's foul play probably involved however because of this they can't release any more information now this is the van that luke was driving obviously before it was burnt out they do have pictures of that but that couldn't be released because of the ongoing investigation and they have posters and different things all up around the area. And this is still an ongoing investigation. His family is still desperate for answers and wanting to know what happened to Luke and who could have wanted to hurt him. And with all these cases that we're discussing today, I'm going to have all the information in the description, the RCMP involved in the cases, all the information, the Crime Stoppers numbers that you can contact if you have any information regarding any of the cases that we are discussing today. The next case we are going to be discussing, I think a lot of you might be more familiar with, and that is the case of Ryan Stuka, who disappeared on February 17th of 2018. Now, Ryan was a seasonal worker working at the Sun Peaks Resort as a lift operator. He's roughly six feet tall, 180 pounds, with blonde hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing dark jeans, a gray and white shirt, a blue coat, and a burgundy colored baseball cap. It was believe that Ryan was planning to walk the very short distance to his home from a party on Burfield Drive in Sun Peaks. It was just a regular house party that he was attending with friends and he left this party at roughly 2 a.m. and that was the last time anyone saw him. When he didn't show up for work the next day, obviously his friends and family became concerned. They noted contacted the authorities and there was immediately a search and rescue that went out but from the very beginning they were very concerned because the temperatures were so cold that night and they feared that he probably had fallen maybe took a fall and then fell into some deep snow but they had all kinds of search and rescue peak personnel volunteers people with different search dogs 
Hundreds of volunteers from both British Columbia and Alberta searched for months. They initially searched between the party where he left that night and where the, he was living. But over the course of the next few months, they brought in an RCMP helicopter, more helicopters and a dive team to aid in the search. But even with all that, nothing was found. They did extensive interviews with people that were at the party. There was a possible sighting of Ryan that they believed was accurate because they said that they saw Ryan walking towards the resort center, possibly for something to eat. This witness was apparently sober and had the exact time for the sighting. There was also another case where his uh, one of his friends named Jim, who was living, staying with friends in the house near where Ryan was staying, that said that night he heard a very loud argument. He heard somebody shouting, like, get in the car, and he said it sounded very angry. He, of course, reported this to the RCMP, but he, he reported that after he reported the incident, they never got back to him and it never went anywhere. The RCMP continued their investigation after the ground thawed, thinking that he most likely had fallen and after the snow melted, they would find him. They even brought in special, more search dogs, but they didn't find anything. And it's interesting to note that some people, some experts that have been working and that had since retired originally were thinking along the lines of this theory. But then after reviewing some of the evidence and speaking to some of the witnesses, they thought maybe foul play could have been involved. However, the Corporal Jody Schelke, who was in charge or is in charge of this investigation, says that there is no information to substantiate that. She is quoted in saying there is just no evidence suggesting that Ryan ever left Sun Peaks. She did say, though, that they have not ruled out criminality in the disappearance, and because they have no evidence, they have to keep every avenue open. And they are still investigating this case. It is still an active, open investigation. The family has also been working with Wings of Mercy, which is a nonprofit organization that helps family of missing loved ones. There was also a Canadian documentary from CBC that featured a man by the name of Alan Hobbler, who was a member of Can Loop Search and Rescue. And one of the things that he said that I thought was very interesting was he said that despite the inches of snow that had fallen from the time Ryan went missing, any tracks left behind would have still been obvious in one way or another, yet they found none. So this leads more credence to the theory that Ryan possibly got into a vehicle, maybe at his will or against his will. That coupled with the fact that the search got started right away and the search dogs could pick up no scent, the search was highly involved, and the distance between where the party was and where he was going wasn't that extensive. And the fact that no one, through all the searchers, all the family members, everybody that they interviewed, no one had any found any sign of Ryan which only adds to the mystery of this case. And more and more people and more experts believe that he did, in fact, leave with someone or get in a vehicle. And sadly, he remains missing to this day, and this still is an active investigation. There are still searches going on, and I'll have all the information in the description if you have any information. The next case we are going to be talking about is... Ben Tyner, who disappeared on January 26th of 2019 in the Merritt area of British Columbia. Now, Ben was working as a cowboy. He loved being a cowboy. He was a very well-traveled individual. His family said that he had been all over the world and he had settled in this area and he just loved it. And he, this day, he wrote, was riding into the hills to look for some cattle and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. His family described him as a gentle giant who just loved to ride horses and they couldn't imagine what could have possibly happened to him. But unfortunately, two days later, his horse was discovered on a logging road off of Highway 97 near Winnie Flats. And of course, this prompted a huge search and effort that spanned multiple days and it involved Numerous police and search and rescue departments, including from Kamloops and Merritt counties, Merritt's RCMP was supported by the investigation by the British Columbia RCMP Southeast District Majors Crimes Units, who still at this time is the operating uh, agency over seeing this investigation because it is still an ongoing investigation. And despite their 
search and rescue besides finding the horse they weren't able to muster up any clues however they did release a statement that they do have enough evidence to believe that this was foul play and because of that the RCMP in charge of this case, the major crimes unit, couldn't release any more information. However, they are investigating it as a criminal investigation. And all the RCMP Southeast District Major Crime Unit could say was the release states that in order to protect their ongoing efforts, police cannot release the details that led them to believe Ben was a victim of homicide. There is a $30,000 reward leading to for any information leading to the arrest or information regarding the disappearance of Ben Tyner. And I just can't imagine what his family was going through. I mean, he's just such a nice guy, always helping people. And who would want to hurt him? I mean, it's just, it's just such a, a horrible case. And I just hope the family gets justice soon. And like I said, I'll have the information on the RCMP major crimes unit that you can contact if you have any information, as well as for all these cases, the Crime Stopper information as well in the description. This next case is different because the remains of these two men have been found. They were last seen in the 16400 block 23a avenue in surrey at around 12 30 pm on july 17th 2019 they were believed to have been heading towards lighten along the thompson river which was about 35 kilometers northeast no one really knows what happened their names are richard skur pictured on the left and ryan preventure pictured on the right they weren't seen for a month, their white 2019 Jeep Cherokee was found on July 21st of the same year, 2019, parked in a wooded area near Logan Lake, which was three over three hours away from where they were last seen. Then one month later, their remains were found in a rural area north of Spence's Bridge, which is about 80 kilometers away. Of course, this obviously made no sense because how would their Jeep get there and obviously their bodies there? The RCMP said in a statement that authorities released that this was obviously foul play. There was obviously an element of criminality. The RCMP has stated that unfortunately because of that, they couldn't release any more information. The investigators from the RCMP Southeast District Major Crime Unit is also investigating this. As you can see, a lot of these cases are all being investigated by the same unit, and they all happened in and around the same area. According to a statement by the RCMP, both men did have prior criminal records, but they were over decades old, and they hadn't been in trouble for years, and they're not sure whether it was related. They are still looking for leads and any information regarding this case, and again, I'll have all that information in the description. This next case involves a man named Marshall Iwasa. He is described as 5 foot 11 inches tall, about 170 pounds, with brown eyes, shoulder length brown hair, and he usually wore it tied back, and he usually had a mustache. Now, he was last seen wearing a green hoodie, black pants, red high top shoes, and a gray toque. His truck is described as a dark blue 2009 GMC Sierra. Now, here is where the it's bizarre. He left his house in Lethridge on November 17th of 2019, and he was just planning to go to a storage locker. He told his family he would be returning to Calgary. The storage unit locker codes and logs does show that he was there, and he did enter the facility, and he left roughly two hours after he initially got there. And that was the last time he was ever seen there unfortunately there was no video surveillance of him being there and there's no records or video surveillance of his truck anywhere in between lethridge and where his truck was an, an found now his truck was found burnt out in a remote forest road near darcy british columbia on november 23rd 2019 by hikers hiking in a very remote part of the forest this is apparently close to the trailhead to the Brian Waddington hut near Pemberton, and his family has no idea how he would have even got there. He's never been there, not to mention that that area is very remote and very difficult to ask access. You need 4x4 in order to get there, and 
They just have no clue how or why he would have been there or how that truck got there. Even more alarming, some of the belongings found scattered around the burnt vehicle were belonging to him, but many of them, the family confirmed, did not belong to him. And the, according to the family, the Lethbridge Police Department have not investigated any of those items found at the scene and were not looking into confirming the owner of those items, which I can imagine would be very frustrating. That coupled with the fact that there's no video surveillance anywhere around and they didn't find any other uh, evidence in the area. The family actually started a petition to try and classify the investigation and disappearance as a criminal case instead of a missing persons case. And so far, it's it's gathered a, a lot of signatures and it's looking well, but the, he's still missing. He's nowhere to be found. And the fact that his burnt out vehicle was found in the middle of nowhere, a place that was hours and hours away from where he was, just makes no sense. And it just kind of leads you to believe that obviously foul play was involved. Not to mention it is in the Kamloops Triangle where all of these cases that we've discussed today have taken place. And it was so far from where he originally went. Now, the police said that from the onset of their investigation that they are considering it suspicious, but unfortunately they have no quote unquote credible or corroborating or compelling information to suggest foul play. Police also said that their investigation had determined that before he went missing, Marshall had apparently hidden the fact that he had stopped attending post-secondary classes and was possibly stressed. But to me, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't explain anything. And come on, if, if we're, we all get stressed now and then, it's just one of those things. This case differs a little bit because it's been handled by the Lethbridge, Lethbridge Police Department because that was his hometown and where he was. But it is noteworthy that these police departments and the RCMP, all these agencies have been communicating and they have shared notes because of all the similarities and these cases all taking place so close to each other and within such close time frames. And my thoughts and prayers go out to all these men and all their families and loved ones and I just can't imagine what they're going through and you know reading about them and hearing the interviews the the sadness it's, it's just so painful. I mean the not knowing is just I it's just one of the worst things in the world and one of the women that was interviewed she said it's a club that you'd never want to be um, a part of and I just you could see the tears welling up in her eyes and I just pray and hope that these men are, are found and they get the justice that they deserve. Most of these cases are being handled by the Southeast District Major Crime Unit and that line is 1-877-987-8477 and that is handled the RCMP, but I'll have more information in the description on each one of the cases and who to contact. And I hardly ever ask this, but I asked you to please share this video and hopefully some of these people can get some justice and their family can get some answers. I want to thank you all for watching as always, and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end, and I just wanted to say thank you to all my viewers and everybody who watches just for all your support and for all your feedback and your comments. I always love hearing from you, and I just wanted to say I really appreciate it. And if you aren't subscribed, I ask that maybe you subscribe, give me a chance, ask me what you'd like to see. I'm more than willing to you cover cases that people request and cover cases that are happening in your area. And I thank you again for all your support, and I'll see you in the next one.